How's it going everyone? I'm Gonzer and today guess what? Oh my god, you've been had! Oh my god! Ash and Pikachu, they're not actually dying. Oh my fucking god. I bet you guys are super mad. I bet someone is there like, fuck you, Gonzer. I I I thought they were really gonna die. Why why would you lie? Why would you do that? It's because the community deserves it. Quite frankly. That is, the Pokemon community is just begging to be fooled. You guys just love to be fooled. People in the Pokemon community will just believe fucking anything. You can tell them anything, and they'll believe it, like half of them will believe it. Some of you probably think you're excluded, and you are not. But that's okay, because today, we are going to go over inquiry, basic inquiry, how to not be fooled. Oh my God, it's going to be some super serious stuff, but no, we have to get this out of the way. Um, a lot of people really badly need this, you know, and I'm sorry for the clickbait guys, but uh, I'm not sorry at all, but I really, I really need people in this community to learn some basic lessons and this video that's what it's meant to do it's meant to really just put a couple of basic things in your head and get you guys to really chew on it and hopefully see the errors of your ways Aww. first off you know just a couple of simple rules to follow and then we'll get more complex but a couple of really simple things to follow and uh, first one is, above all else, be objective. Uh, you need to realize that what you want to be true and that what is true are two different things entirely and that you should never let your personal feelings get in the way of your understanding of the world, the universe. Uh, you need to take note of what you're into. Like, for example, do you think that Ash and Dawn, you think they, they are real cute together, uh, for example? Well, um, you should know that then you would be more likely to delude yourself into like shipping for the two, despite the fact that the two were never written to be love interests. Just be honest with yourself. They were never written to be love interests. It's okay to think they're, they're, they're cute together, but don't go around saying, oh, they belong together. Well, no, you'd, uh, that's not how, that's not how it went. <laughs> Another example is, are you into mind-blowing stories? Are you into conspiracies? Well, then you need to know that you're more likely to fall for such conspiracies, such talk. So subjectivity is when you just let your feelings get in the way. You can't let your feelings get in the way. But the good news here is all you need to do, all you need to do is leave room for doubt and be honest with yourself. You can like subjective things. You could be entertained by them. You could uh, tell stories in your mind that you're very entertained by and that you like. But when it comes to the real world, be honest with yourself. Be honest with the amount of work that you've done. Be honest with what you saw on the screen. It's not hard. Just don't lie. That's all there is to it. But now let's go over some methods of inquiry. What you need to know is that authority, uh, you know, a single source, for example, is a horrible method of inquiry. Uh, truth is not about checking your sources. It's about checking your sources, sources, and going straight to the root of a situation. It is very hard to do this. That is why it is imperative that you stay honest with yourself and that you never put all of your coins in one basket. So, what does that mean? Never putting all your coins in one basket. It means even things that you are very true, that you know are true. Yeah, I believe that 99.9%. .9%. Yeah, I believe that 90%. Never say 100%. Always leave room for doubt. Uh, and guys, I understand it is easy to believe people who you think are smart and people who, you, who agree with you 
It's it's okay to take chances. It's okay to take guesses, but you need to recognize that they are chances and guesses. Um, you should know how strongly you believe something based on how well you've looked into it. Exactly. That's what it's about. Next, you should know that the wisdom of crowds is better than the method of authority, but it is still fallible. You need to be aware of groupthink. You need to understand the danger of, th of being around people while thinking, and you need especially being around people who agree with you. Uh, it has created many shipping communities and Pokemon community. People think Ash belongs with this person or belongs with this girl or belongs with this Latios. Oh God, fucking weirdos, man. Although Ash never, you know, sexually expressed any interest in these people, you name it, there's a ship for it, and there's people deluding themselves together with s small, little, baby amounts of evidence that are not really evidence. Things that you might have not seen before, but they just sit here and just make up shit about it. It's crazy. So, groups, it could, it could seem like you're getting the best information there, but... You're probably not. It's, it is always the best to do the work. Of course, the greatest method of inquiry is science, which begins with observation and moves to hypothesis, testing, and debate. It doesn't involve making shit up, and it is difficult, as I've said, to be a scientist, and that is just yet another reason to just simply remain honest with yourself so I want to go over some basic uh, shortcuts here small things that you could do to make yourself less likely to be fooled just small things to remember that'll make uh, errors shining errors just stand out to you more arguments they should follow to their conclusion and you realize that it's very easy to be fooled in situations that do not follow, but they seem that they do. Um, so what logic is, is the rules to reasoning and what logical fallacies are, I'll put a link below, are common misunderstandings of these rules applied in reasoning, okay? For example, if I said, after the WWE, for example, if I said after the WWE got popular in the late 90s, there was a sudden uptick in uh, backyard wrestling deaths. Therefore, the WWE, they caused that death. Would that make sense? Uh, it shouldn't. To a lot of people, you would they would look at that, they'd hear that and go, man, that makes sense. Wrestling, wrestling, wrestling. Once popular and a bunch of deaths happened, WWE caused it. It's actually a logical fallacy of the non-casa pro casa family. Uh, that is, co correlation does not equal causation. Uh, the specific fallacy here is actually one of order, which is post hoc ergo propter hoc, or after this, therefore because of this, which points out, you know, that an event following another event doesn't necessarily mean the first event caused the next. Even if these events, you know, have big things in common. Oh, they're both violent. Oh, they're both wrestling. But, uh, you know, think about it. You're at a court case, uh, and you're, uh, you're on, it's going to be pretty easy to be WWE's lawyer when you're going to have to show that WWE somehow, that Vince McMahon somehow fucking mind controlled these kids and, you know, <laughs> took away all of their agency and forced them to kill themselves by jumping off a ladder through a fucking flaming table. Yeah, it would be, uh, it would be a crime to blame that on the WWE. It'd be ridiculous. So here are some simple problem-solving principles. I'll go over t three of them, cup, two or three of them. First off, Occam's Razor. Say that you have two competing, very plausible theories, two explanations. You should know that the simplest one is more likely to be the correct one. Okay, but over time, your understanding of this principle, it'll get better the more you understand simplicity and chance. It kind of reminds me of this old House MD episode where Foreman was like, 
It has to be this extremely rare, you know, one in a billion disease. And House is like, no, man, it's uh, these two other pretty rare diseases. And Foreman's like, you think two is simpler than one? And the truth is, House was correct because you run the ratios there. It, it would be more likely of that person catching those two rare diseases than getting the one extremely rare disease. So after that, let's jump to explanatory scope and power. And I'm going to use an explanation here that has just always stuck with me through a long time. It's from a guy named Richard C. Carrier. Uh, don't bother looking into him. He is crazy as fuck. Uh, don't, I, and don't bother caring about where it came from. That doesn't matter. Uh, he is... It's just a quote from him that I think is a good quote. Other than that, he ain't my fucking friend, but again, that doesn't matter. So, if several theories are plausible, any one of them could turn out to be true. But until we get more evidence, our best bet would be the most plausible theory. So, after meeting the criteria of plausibility, the most plausible explanation will be the one that has the greatest explanatory scope and power. A hypothesis with explanatory scope explains many facts, not just one or two, and thus would explain a great deal about why this universe exists rather than some other, why the universe has the properties it does rather than others, and a hypothesis with explanatory power makes the facts it explains highly probable. In other words, given that the explanation is a fact, we would very likely, if not almost certainly, expect this universe to exist and be the exact way it is. Good stuff there, Richard Carrier. One last bit here, guys. And uh, I'm sure people clicked off a long time ago, but uh, this video needed to be made. I want to tell you that it is okay to fantasize and be engaged by stories that are not true. There is a reason that I have put up several videos where I'm like, this is how I would do this story in Pokemon. How I would write Ash's ending. How I would bring Greninja back. Uh, and I've been doing that to show you that it is okay to fantasize without being utterly fucking delusional. When I put out those videos, people unfortunately pop in the comments and talk about my theory. Those videos are not theories. They are fantasy. They are bullshit. Just basic mind entertainment I made up for the people of the anime community that has uh, essentially been left fictionally unfulfilled because they're the writers are either creatively bankrupt bunch of bitches or they're the bitches of a freaking franchise either way i think the anime can be better and that they need to just figure out their goddamn jobs and uh, they shouldn't leave some space wide open for people to tell better stories than them which i hold i have there is a reason that i don't make theory videos and that if I make a theory video, it's far more likely to me to be me just saying, "These look at look at this goofy shit these people believe. Look how they're lying to themselves. Look how ridiculous this is." Like I did yesterday, and there, believe me, there's people in those comments saying, "I believe Ash died during the first movie." Well, you're just begging to be fooled, aren't you? I really hope you're ten, because if you're if you're an adult man, like you need to get your shit together. It boils down to this though, guys. All you have to do is the following, like I said. Know how much work you've put into understanding something and just be honest with yourself. As a positive also, be honest with others. It's not very hard, not much to it. But that's gonna be it for today, guys. I'm sure there's lots of them angry people. Oh shit, I thought that Pikachu was gonna die. I thought Ash was gonna die. Of course they're not. Or maybe he will. Maybe Ash will die in Coco and and, <laughs> and uh, come back five seconds later like he always does in every death that he's ever had. Maybe we'll talk about that soon. Ash's uh, worst death. I mean like the most emotional death. I already know which one it is. And you guys should too. It's not the first movie. There's one far more vivid. Oh boy. But I'll leave you with a question, guys, and that is... Can the Pokemon community be fixed? 
can the Pokemon community be made smarter is essentially what I mean by that. And that's going to be it. Please like, please comment, please subscribe, please share. Go ahead and hit the dislike button if you're so butthurt by uh, clickbait. But until next time, guys, peace out, cats.